Hello, welcome to Mind and Body Wellness, a television show where we talk about the health of your mind, your body, and your spirit, where we interview a variety of guests from the mainstream to the alternative. I'm your host, Clovis Colley, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to Brian Ortner from the American Cancer Society. Correct. Very good. Good to be here, Clovis. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm going to practice saying society next time <laughs> before, you, uh, before you come on again. Uh, I've been really excited about this interview all week. This is, uh, this is something that's uh, near and dear to my heart, and a lot of people uh, that are going to be viewing the show have probably experienced cancer. We're going to have ex uh, cancer survivors, um, people that have lost family members to, to cancer, and uh, it seems like we hear way too much about cancer. We do. Unfortunately, cancer is one of those things that affects every single one of us in some way. If it hasn't been a family member, it's been a friend. If it hasn't been a friend, it's been a coworker. If it hasn't been a coworker, it's the friend of a friend. I mean, you can probably do a very short connection between yourself and someone who has cancer. And either they're a survivor mm -hmm. or they've passed on. That's the unfortunate reality of, of the disease that we call cancer. Right, I, while my aunt <clears throat> recently passed away in the last uh, a little over a year, two years uh, uh, too long, it seems like to me, and you know, just uh, uh, well, you know, I talked to her daughters, my cousins, and you know, they're just devastated still, and uh, and it's just uh, I can't imagine what it feels like to get that news. I can a little bit because they told me I had a spot on my lung. I was having a little gallbladder bladder trouble, and they did a scan on me, and they said, "Hey, you have a spot on your lung." It'll take your breath away, uh, both literally and, and figuratively. Absolutely. Um, you know, I have the amazing opportunity to visit with survivors and caregivers through my job at the American Cancer Society. And one constant that is always there is when they hear the diagnosis, you have cancer. Um, it starts off where they're not hearing anything. You know, the doctor says you have cancer and then everything goes blank and you they say they, you start running 100,000 different scenarios through your head of, oh my gosh, how long do I have to live? What am I going to tell my mom? What am I going to tell my kids? How's my husband going to deal with this? Um, but the amazing thing that comes after that is when they realize, I'm going to win. Uh, and that, that's from these survivors. And they will tell you that faith, family, friends, support and hope are the, the five things that, that help them get through. To have that attitude that I'm going to fight this with all I have and enjoy the life I have now because it's given you a new life perspective. And that's coming from survivors. That's not coming from, from me sitting here who hasn't been affected directly by cancer with a diagnosis. I've been affected by family, friends, coworkers who've had cancer. So my role has been in a support role for those I've encountered in my life. So this plugs into your uh, this plugs into your um, career life. This plugs into your family life. This is uh, this is a little bit. I'm I'm getting to know you a bit, and I'm I'm yeah. seeing that this is a little bit more than a job to you. You know, it's I, I can't lie. It started off as a job. Um, as, as we were visiting earlier, I mean, we've all had our career ups and downs. You 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 get to a point in careers where you either want to move on, or you're you're asked to move on because of elements out of your control. Um, when I started with the American Cancer Society, um, it started as a job, but there was a, a connection there because I've lost people to cancer. Within six months of my time being employed there, um, my nephew was diagnosed with cancer, and it brought a whole new level of why I'm doing what I'm doing every day to the forefront. Um, I see this little kid at six years old right now, toughest little man I've ever met in my life. Um, He's a survivor and he's living every day and he's laughing every day and I, and I love it. So that, that helps get me motivated. Having the, the opportunity to meet with survivors keeps me motivated. Seeing good success stories. You know, the unfortunate reality is with cancer, there is an outcome that, we, that none of us want and that, that is the death um, from cancer. And I think that's how this conversation will go today is that when it comes to the topic of cancer, I mean, it's not all cancers, but there are some that are preventable based on lifestyle choices. There are some that are treatable, and there are some that can be avoided altogether based on lifestyle choices. So I think this opportunity here to share some of that information is, is a great 
thing for us as an organization and for those who are watching because we are here in Omaha to help you accomplish that, to reach those goals of being cancer free if at all possible and helping you live that healthier lifestyle that may directly impact your chances. Now, let's, uh, let's back up a bit. Let's talk about who American Cancer Society is. You said they're 103 years old. 103 years old, um, a global organization. We now have, have reach into many countries around the world, Africa being one that we're, we're doing a lot of work in um, for cancer incident rates are very high in Africa, so we're spending a lot of time in Africa. But here in the United States- Is that due to pollution or? Um, economies, living situations, eating habits, accessibility to water, um, you know, many things that we may take for granted here in the United States um, for things that we just have at the drop of a hat. Uh, but the organization itself, 103 years, um, in that time, um, research is probably the one thing people equate when they hear the name American Cancer Society. Um, we are the largest not-for-profit funder of cancer research, second only to the United States government um, this year. Our new CEO, Gary Reedy, announced that by the year 2021, our research efforts will double in number. Um, to give you an idea of where that sits right now, we just announced $45 million in our second half of the year research grants here this fall. Um, there are currently 185 active researchers in place that are funded by the American Cancer Society. So by 2021, not only will that 45 million double in the fall, it will go to 90 million, take that 185 and double that for the amount of research that's going on. And there are some great things going on in the world of research. Um, I can speak to a topic like immunotherapy, um, which is a big thing that they're looking at, looking at individual genetics. I'm not a doctor, I can't go much farther than that, uh, but there are those who can, and they are when they have those funds and their labs can stay open. I, I, you know, we've, uh, we've mapped the human genome, and so what has that meant to, to, to cancer? I, I think they talk about, I'm not a doctor either, so we won't go too far down this rabbit trail, <laughs> but they're talking about things now like epigenetics and uh, that environmental things, thinking the way that you think, uh, being angry all the time, uh, stress, uh, cortisol, all those things are affecting your genetics and your epigenetics in a really fast, much more real-time way than we ever thought before. Yeah, and that, and again, as, you, as we both had mentioned, we're not doctors, we can't go real far into that, but I know there, if you um, go back and search the archives of this, of not to mention other TV show, but the CBS Morning News, and, or even on cancer.org, our website, in the search box, type in the word fruit fly. There is a researcher on the East Coast that has spent five or six years researching fruit flies as it relates to cancer mm -hmm. genetics because whatever the makeup of our can the human cancer cell is so similar to that of the cells inside a fruit fly, he's been able to create some mapping that connects the two to possibly eliminate the growth of a cancer cell in a human. It's phenomenal, it's about a six minute story and you're just sitting there looking at it going, because of a fruit fly? And, it, and it's, it's unbelievable that these are the things that young minds are, are thinking of when they're getting in the research field and going into you know, the minute areas of genetics, you know, looking at our individual genetic makeup of, of our own bodies, which is so intricate. good things coming down the pike. I think a lot of people, mm -hmm. we look at cancer and you know, it's something I've been aware of my whole lifetime. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I think some people look at it and think, it, think of it as a very hopeless thing. That Absolutely, and I think that turn of cancer being a death sentence to where it is now that there's hope to continue your life has really changed since the early to mid 80s. Um, you know, if you take individual cancers to look at them, breast cancer, as, as an example, since 1986 has had a 39% decline in mortality rates, which is fantastic. That doesn't mean people aren't still being diagnosed. It means people are still being diagnosed, but they're living longer. Um, they're not dying from the disease. It's being caught before it metastasizes and maybe goes to mm -hmm. other parts of the body where we can't treat it through the therapies that we have right now, your traditional chemotherapies or radiation treatments. But when you're extending the life of someone, you've saved that life. 
Yes. And, and that's a, that is a great thing. Um, and when you save that life, the attitude definitely, I think, becomes a lot different as well, where you realize that life is full of opportunities and you're going to take advantage of those. And again, hearing from survivors, that's an outlook they have, that their life has been extended or saved because they found cancer early and they've been able to have successful treatment. Um, let's talk about uh, the things you can control. And this is, uh, mm. this is you know, uh, we talked about this fits into my mission. You know, I have a smoking cessation clinic. Absolutely. My mission in life is to help anybody get off cigarettes that's smoking cigarettes. I'm an ex two pack a day smoker and uh, I was able to quit through the use of hypnosis and that's what I do. I coach people and do other things to support them mm -hmm. in quitting smoking and uh, I'd like to eradicate smoking off the face of the planet. I'm, and, I, and I sat there and smoked cigarettes knowing, God, okay. when are they going to cut part of my throat out or, or, or part of my lung out. Uh, as I said earlier, they found a spot on my lung. It seems to be okay. Uh, it seems to be uh, normal granuloma. Uh, but it's uh, smoking cigarettes or chewing tobacco, I mean, it's just, I, you're kind of asking for it. Yeah, and, and I sit here with you self-admitting that I, I smoked for 15 years. Actually, I, it probably closer to 20. Started at mm -hmm. the age of 15 right. and stopped around the age of 35. Um, and just looking at what, what smoking is, you know, pack a day, two or three bucks a day, 30 days out of a month. I mean, the money that we spent, and, sure. you know, you can, can relate to that. But just the fact of taking that cigarette away for that first hour after you don't have it, your blood circulation increases, your blood pressure drops. So there are almost immediate results after you put down that cigarette that happened to your body. Um, tobacco is a known carcinogen. It's one of those things that if you stop smoking, you're, you are decreasing your chances for lung cancer. If you never smoke in your life, your chances for lung cancer are dramatically lower than somebody who has smoked. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's just, you know, the, the numbers game. But cutting smoking out of your life will have a direct impact on one, your health, and two, the chances that you will be diagnosed with lung cancer. Um, it's one of the highest cancer, uh, the highest mortality rates for cancers. More people die from lung cancer than they do from breast cancer, which is unfortunate. But that's the thing, it's treatable, or, or it's, it's preventable, I should say. Um, in some stages, it is treatable with the, the current cancer treatments. But when you can prevent a cancer from coming into your body, that's an eye-opening statement, I think. It that, is, but I, as a smoker, I'll tell you, people, <laughs> you know, it's tough to look at those things squarely. You kind of ignore them and put them out of your mind, and I guess basically what they call it is denial. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I think the one thing that we as an organization do um, we partner with, with um, national pharmacies to help with smoking cessation. Online at cancer.org, if you looked up smoking cessation, you would find different guides to help you through that process. Um, it's not telling you to you know, go out and, and find a replacement. It's, it's, mm. it's getting right to the root of it. Why do you want to quit smoking? Are you looking for health improvements? It's hard to quit smoking. I think that, and we were talking earlier, that's one thing that we both mentioned, that quitting smoking is, is hard. If you can get it on your first shot, congratulations to you. I mean, that's, that's a great accomplishment. Right. It, it's not easy. They're saying it, six, seven, eight attempts to, yeah. um, to, and to just do know, that. If you're committed to it, you will succeed, I think, is, is the ultimate outcome. Mm -hmm. But there's resources out there via hypnosis, via step-by-step -step guidance through cessation plans um, or just personal connection. You know, mine was kids. Yeah. Um, well, any kind, of plan is, any kind of plan is better than no plan. Absolutely, and just like it, in life. If it works, I'm not knocking it. Uh, God bless you. Uh, if, you, if, you if it's the gum, if it's this, that, the other thing. I have my doubts about the vapor cigarettes. I don't, I'm not, it's not a thing that I would tell my friends as a friend that you should probably do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I can state my opinion on that as, as the, the organization, the American Cancer Society. Um, it's not something we, we would recommend to get you off of smoking. There, I mean, there's, there's research being done on the effects, good and bad. There may be good ones. I, I don't know. Um, 
so there's really not an official position on that. Um, it's something I wouldn't do personally, I don't think. Right, right. I, I mean, if it's short term and you're going to do it for two weeks or four weeks, right. you know, maybe, maybe. Um, but we don't know enough about it. I, I don't think that uh, I don't think that anybody should take it for granted that, that it's that it's safe, and because it hasn't been researched. Right. And then you know we were talking about prevention methods for you know if you put down the cigarette, what happens? And and it goes along the lines again with what you're doing as, as your daily mission, um, just a healthy lifestyle and healthy living. I mean, if, if you maintain a good diet, um, that definitely helps reduce your incident risks for cancer. If you exercise, not saying go to the gym for three hours a day, mm -hmm. um, get up and walk for 20 minutes a day. Just just move around be somewhat physically active, manage your weight. Um, I know I've got room to work on that. Um, I'm not perfect, you know, life gets in the way of life sometimes. Sure. Um, but I try to stay active, um, chasing, chasing kids around helps with that. Um, and this is something you, you believe it or not, you need to think about year round. As we're moving into the fall and winter months, sun safety is a big factor. Um, melanoma is right up there with lung cancer and breast cancer is one of those cancers that Mortality rate is, is high um, due to use of tanning beds or just being outside and mm -hmm. not using the right protection. Right, right. Um, another one of those that's that's preventable by doing certain things. So I think that's that's a key to take away is that there are some cancers, if you do the right things, are preventable. Um, they may be treatable, um, and you can you can live with them as a survivor, hopefully. Um, but if you don't follow the recommendations or guidelines, you you know you may be setting yourself up for a diagnosis that you don't want. Right, right, uh, yeah, and we don't want to hear that. We don't no. want to hear those <laughs> words, uh, not for me, not for you, not for anybody else. Right. The, the one thing that you're telling me that I didn't realize, and I don't think a lot of people uh, realize either, and the message needs to be spread, that you have a lot of resources, and it's not just research. You're there for the person that's been diagnosed with cancer. Absolutely, and, you know, that is... That is one thing with our organization on a national level that we are really working to get out there. Um, it's not that people don't know about it, it's just that not enough people know about what's available. Um, we have an office here in Omaha, right out by the West Roads. If you walked out the doors of J.C. Penney at the West Roads Mall and walked north, get that physical activity in, you know, while you're right. coming to see us, we're right there, got a big sign come in and see us. There are programs and services offered right here locally. I'll start from the kind of the top and, and work down um, of services that are offered. If you or someone you know hears the words you have cancer and you're sitting by yourself, you don't know what to do. And this can be the initial diagnosis, three weeks after diagnosis, after you go to a doctor's appointment. Um, I always give this warning. I'm going to give you an 800 number you can call. And, and it's on the back of all of our business cards. It's on the back of every, it's on the, every piece of material that we put out there. If you call 1-800-227-2345, that's our National Cancer Information Center. There will be someone there to listen to you, to talk to you, to help you. But you need to make that call. Um, things that that Cancer Information Center can provide. One, it can just be that ear that you need because you got the diagnosis. Um, the only thing you may have heard from your doctor was that it was, uh, you know, melanoma or was it breast cancer? Was it some form of breast cancer? But after that, you heard nothing. You remember what the doctor told you. Our, our trained staff are there to help you get a little more understanding of what that diagnosis means, what it is, what, what could be the treatment options your doctor might describe to you. Um, help if you catch your breath a little bit. Yeah, kind of absolutely. Um, if there's questions you have, because it's going to affect your job um, related to your insurance costs. We have nurses on staff who are experts when it comes to navigating health insurance. You can talk with them about answering those questions. Will this apply to this test? Will that apply to that test? What can I do when it comes to my work about taking time off? What, you know, side effects of different treatments? Do you only need to take half a day as opposed to a, a full day? Just good counseling that happens. Um, and then it goes into other resources. If you're, if you're looking ahead and you know that because going out of work may cause some financial impacts with your day-to-day -day life. Um, we as an organization cannot just, for the sheer number of requests that come in, provide direct 
you know, financial service to individuals, mm -hmm. but we can connect you with those organizations that do. Um, it is pretty amazing at the Cancer Information Center the amount of resources that they have access to. Um, some people that can help you with a mortgage payment or organizations that can help you work with your mortgage company to help figure out a plan where do you need three months where, you know, there's organizations that are out there. They might not be here in Nebraska, they might be in Tennessee or Colorado, but our, our staff are trained to help find those areas for you. Um, transportation resources, wherever you may be. Um, if you have to travel for treatment, there are people who are diagnosed with cancer here in Omaha who have to go to Houston, Texas at MD Anderson to receive their treatment. They have to go to Iowa City, they have to go to Rochester, they may have to go to California um, to receive their treatment. Where are you gonna stay? Um, mm -hmm. And the same thing applies for people coming to Omaha. We can help you find, we partner with hotels all across the country to provide free or reduced, stay, reduced rate rooms for you to stay in. And reduced rate, it still isn't like 50, 80 bucks a night. Reduced rate is like free, five, ten dollars a night to help accommodate you while you're traveling for treatment. That's amazing. Yeah, so, so that's out there. Locally, if you need a ride to treatment, um, if somebody's going through active treatment, you have so many chemotherapy appointments and so many days straight of radiation. Well, when your husband or your wife exhausts their time off from work and your son or daughter who can drive can get a day off of school and your older brother or sister or aunt or uncle who can get some time off exhausts and you their may, time you, off. You may not be feeling well enough to drive an automobile exactly. yourself. Exactly. Um, we have volunteers that we train and screen um, and that, that's a big thing. We, we do the background checks on them and they are available to give rides to and from treatment. Um, you, you get set up, you can get set up by calling our, our National Cancer Information Center and you schedule everything through them. If you have your, your treatment schedule, they will get you lined up. We have 54 drivers right now in the Omaha, Douglas, Douglas Sarpy, Washington County area. And you said oftentimes these folks are cancer survivors and they want to give support. Cancer survivors are caregivers, absolutely, and they, they want to give back. Um, and they are not without rides. Um, we started tw 2016 with 23 drivers here in Omaha. We did, uh, uh, you know, I, I hopefully did my job, and we had a push for recruitment for volunteers. Um, and now that number's at 54. Since May nice. of this year, we have, of anybody who's called in to request a ride, of those 54 drivers, they've all provided rides. There has not been a ride that we haven't met yet that we've known about, which that's is pretty cool. It, it, it is That's amazing. That's pretty cool. So, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll have some folks here, you know, through this television show and they can call you and if they would like to volunteer, if they've been, they're cancer survivors. And, Absolutely. Uh, maybe we'll help connect them to, to you, I hope. Yeah, and I, I'm here locally. Uh, my, my phone number at work, 402-398-0768, direct line into me. I can point you in the right direction um, if, you're, if you're in need of a ride. Um, if you're in need of any of other programs or services that we have um, or just have questions, that's an easy number. Or my email address, brian, B-R-I-A-N, dot ortner, O-R-T-N-E-R, at cancer.org. Shoot me an email and I'll make sure to put you in contact with the right people. Um, you know, if you're just newly diagnosed, I mean, sorry to keep talking a little bit. No, 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 go But we, go have, we have trained volunteers who are cancer survivors um, that are able to visit with a newly diagnosed person um, this happens more with our breast cancer diagnosis. Um, it's one of the more common ones, and it's called our Reach to Recovery program, where if you were just diagnosed, we can match you with another breast cancer survivor who can answer questions for you and relate to your situation. You know, if you're married with, with two kids and you're at a certain age, we can match you with somebody who's been in your shoes, who knows how tough it is when your kids are crying and you're sick to death because you had chemo that day. They can mm -hmm. relate, they can help tell you how they got through what they went through and that there is something good to come out of it at the end. Um, that, you know, the treatment will end, that hopefully your diagnosis gets you to the point where you will be able to live your life again after you go through the treatment to get you well. On that note, is the, is the chemo milder now than it used to be or uh, a little easier to take? Uh, you know, I, that's, that's an individual, every, you know, all they our still bodies have are some different. that are aggressive and some Yeah, are, and it, it, you know, it depends on the cancer and depends on the individual. Um, my father-in-law, he, yeah. he had some prostate cancer and the way that they set it up, he didn't, uh, he kind of uh, knocked him down a bit, but he wasn't deathly 
throwing up and, and things like that because they, they had uh, a newer type of deal that was... Right. I know with radiation, things have improved quite a bit. Um, you know, radiation is basically an x-ray. You know, even when you go get an x-ray for a broken arm, the nurse or the attendant in there is wearing a, a metal vest Ooh. so they're not being exposed because with an x-ray you're being exposed to radiation. With radiation, they're actually shooting radiation at you. I mean, you go back 15, 20 years ago, you had cancer, let's say your upper left chest. You're getting radiation across your whole chest. So you're being Ooh. exposed. Now they're, be, they're able to do it where they can, they can go down to a certain size Ooh. and expose your body to radiation only in that area. It's not, so they contain it a little bit better. Yeah, more contained. So there's, there's, there's advancements like that that happen, you know, that are happening, that we're waiting for the next big thing to come out. When is that going to happen? We don't know. I mean, there, there's, her, there's, you know, processes and steps we have to take um, through the research process, through getting things approved through the FDA or through the government, through clinical trials. There's so much that, I mean, there's so many steps, but there's so many good things happening as well. Are we gonna, are we gonna cure cancer one day? You know, if you ask our, our chief cancer control officer, his name's Dr. Richard Wender, he's been a, a cancer doctor for the majority of his career. Um, his response is, will we find a cure for all cancers? No. Will we find a way to avoid cancers and to live with them and extend our lives if we're diagnosed with cancer? Yes. Um, I think there's still hope that, that there will be a cure. I mean, um, and I think his answer is the way it is. Obviously, he's a medical professional. Um, we know with breast cancer, there's over 200 different types of breast cancer mm -hmm. that can be diagnosed. So we're, that makes it a little tough. We're down to about uh, under a minute. Uh, tell us who you are again real very quickly. Okay. My name is Brian Ortner, the communications manager here for Your American Cancer Society in Omaha. Uh, you can reach me, 402-398-0768. If you have questions about a diagnosis or just want to learn more about cancer, go online to cancer.org. And then after you go there, give me a call and I can help direct you to wherever you, whatever services you need. Um, if you need to be in contact with one of our facilities, if you're traveling for treatment, um, I can take care of you. I'm Clovis Colley with Mind and Body Wellness. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Brought to you by Nebraska Counseling and Hypnosis. We'll see you next episode.